Hello everyone. One thing I've been commonly asked is how do I send data from a website that I might have to my Flex application? And what I've shown you in previous videos is how to write the backend Flex code to receive that data. What I haven't shown you how to do is how to write the PHP script that will actually send XML data to Flex. So here that I'm going to do that in this video. First thing I want to do is I want to be inside of Dreamweaver CS5. I'm going to say new under file menu file new and I want to make a blank PHP page okay there's nothing on the page now in back here if you look at the code there is things these don't need to be here because flex will read them out as text which we don't want it to do so the first thing I need to do is define a PHP block then I will close it okay now we're in the middle here what I want to put in is some data the first thing we want it to return, we want to define a variable that's going to contain our return. So we'll call that return. Okay? And since it's PHP, we don't have to define the errors. We don't have to define the variables before we use them. So we can say return equals. Now, the first thing that needs to happen, because this is XML data, is we need to call it XML. So we can go over to Flash Builder, look in our source, and grab this XML tag right out of the top. Oh, that didn't work didn't copy so we'll go back copy go over here paste okay since that won't work we'll just type it in manually XML version oh whoa 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 what is going on here alright XML version equals 1.0 encoding equals UTF-8 now you'll see in here that we have a little bit of an issue because inside of these quotes it's going to cause problems so we need to put this in what is called magic quotes in PHP that involves using a single quote around it then it will recognize the quotes that are actually part of our string so we end it we end that call. Now, since our flex application is going to be sending us some parameters, we want to include those. So, we'll do a login check. We'll say if dollar sign underscore post, we'll call it username, and we'll make this very simple. We'll say if post username is equal to, be sure to use the double equal sign. We'll define a string here. We'll say if username is equal to username now we want it to also check against password so we'll say and dollar sign underscore post password it's, be sure to use the double equal sign it's equal to password then we open the block now what we'll do is we'll say we're going to add data to our return. So, to add to append data to the end of a variable in PHP, use the period equal sign. That's an operator. It's very much like the plus equals in Java. So, now we'll add some XML. We'll say result. That's our first tag. We'll put some text inside of result. And we'll end result. Very simple. Close that off. Close the if. Now we also want to put an else to say if it fails we will append to return oh, put a space there I like to put a space there you don't have to it's just common conventions that I use result equals zero slash result and the if statement. Now, the last thing we need to do is put in a print function. Print. Alright? So we're going to have it print our entire variable. Print result. Now that should be done. So we're going to save this. We'll call it XML return. Go to our files panel. Connect to our site. 
So let's go down here, find XML return, and we'll put it. It's done. So as you can see over here, it exists. Now what we can do is go into our web browser to make sure that this works. Go to going to make sure you have the www if you want to try this yourself. Now there's nothing there. Why? Well, let's look at the source of the page. Page source is blank, which means we have an error somewhere. Well, here's our error. I'm using the wrong variable. So, return rather than result. Post XML return again. Hopefully that went put back to our browser try it again now it's a zero but is it really zero no if you look in the source it has our result and our result but it does not have our closing tag why doesn't it have our closing tag well that's because our web browser parses it out because it doesn't need it so now we're gonna go back over here to flash builder we're gonna make a very simple button this button, we're just going to leave it labeled as button. We're going to give it a click handler. Okay, there's our click handler, and we're going to say return service dot send MX controls alert show. Above that, we also need our if, if, return service dot last result, I spelled that wrong, is not equal to zero. Then we'll have this do that. It will show return service dot last result dot return or is it result? Let's look. Come back over here. It's result dot result. Okay. Now you may get compile errors when we do this. For real, but we have to put in our HTTP service first. URL. Oops, looks like I have a little bit of an error here. Let's change that. Method is post. And we'll have it show the busy cursor just for fun. And that, good. Now you notice that I haven't put in any of the fields, and that's because I don't really need to put in the fields. This is very simple, and we just want to see if it works. I have problems. Where are my problems? Well, right here. I haven't given this an idea. An ID, sorry. Oop, that was wrong. I need to give this an ID, so we'll call it ID equals return service. Now our error should go away. Project builds, we run it. Opens in our browser, got our button, which does nothing. Why does it do nothing? Well, that's because we may not be getting a return, but in any case, you can now see how to build this very quickly. Now what else you can do is use some of the built-in things in Dreamweaver under data. You can build repeat regions and everything. And the easiest way to do that is to build a repeat region on the page, copy the code that makes it repeat and insert it up here to have it repeat data and variables. And you can also build logins doing that. You build your login form, it'll validate against a server behavior or a database or something and you just remove the visual elements so that all it does is return things. In my next video, I think I'm going to show you how to go a little bit deeper with login validation in Flash Builder. 
and then after that I'll do some interactivity with InDesign. That's all for now, and I will see you later.